Good morning, church. We'll try that again. Good morning, church. Merry Christmas. We are so glad that you came out this morning. Welcome to the Foundry slash Poplar service together as we're all together this morning. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Chris Copeland and I lead in the Poplar service. And Derek and I will lead this service uh, together uh, this morning. So uh, we are so glad you came out on a cold morning to celebrate the birth of our Savior. Uh, it's going to be a great morning. <clears throat> Uh, if you brought your Christmas offering this morning, there's Christmas envelopes for that. You can drop that in the offering plate later. Um, each week we have the opportunity as a church family to say our vision statement together. And let's say that at this time, reaching out to transform lives by extending God's love to all. We also have connect cards on the end of each row and you can pass those down to fill those out and drop those in the offering plate later. Let's begin this morning with scripture. John 1 says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. If you would take your bulletins, if you have those, or they'll be on the screen. Let's go ahead and go to the, to the call to worship. Christ is born, give him the glory. Christ has come down from heaven. Receive him. Christ is now on earth. Exalt him. O you earth, sing to the Lord. O you nations, praise him in joy, for he has been glorified. If you would please stand and let's sing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Let's all stand and worship together. Good morning, church. It's so great to be with you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Um, this we, every, every Sunday we recite our faith, and we affirm our faith through the ancient teachings of the Apostles' Creed. And I'd like to invite you to join me now. Those words are on the screen. Let's say it together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the may be seated. Good morning. I'm Tondala, one of the pastors here at Carrieville United Methodist Church, and it is good to be with you on this Christmas morning so that we can celebrate the birth of Jesus together. Usually, it's printed in your bulletin, a list of people that we have, uh, that we need to pray for. So on the screens, you will see that list. And of course, it's not updated because uh, we had to print the bulletins earlier. But please pray for anyone who you know that needs your special prayers. Lift them up to God. And not only that, pray for our missions. You're going to hear later a powerful mission moment about La Limye. Let us go to God in prayer. O oh God of miracles and light, we just give you thanks today. But God, let us not think of Christmas Day as the final destination for the journey on which we have embarked. Guess God, Advent was a time of preparation, a time to examine our lives, our hopes, our fears. It was a time to place our trust, God, in your never failing love and to move again toward you through the darkness to your light. Yes, this season makes us exhausted sometimes, physically, but spiritually, we just love the season, many of us. We are exhausted from our preparation for this season. The demands of the world have been heavy, but we are here, here today, to hear again the powerful reminder of your love, which was intended for us throughout all of time. In the beginning of all creation, your light was given to illuminate the majesty of this place. Your light shined forth through the lives of the prophets, and most especially, God, your light shined through Jesus, your son, your beloved son. So healing and comforting God, you have heard the names of people and situations that need your extra special touch. For those who feel lost and alone and seeking God, we ask that you help us to reach out to them with your good news of your great abiding and unconditional love. And then, God, as we wait on you to answer our prayers, we ask that you give us patience to wait on you. All of this we pray in your Son, Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As I mentioned earlier, each month we have a mission moment describing a specific mission that we wish to support next Sunday with our communion offering. Today you will hear from Ellen Hummerick House about La Limye. Take a listen. Hi, CUMC. It's Ellen from La Limye Ministries. I just wanted to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. This year in particular has been extremely difficult for my little family in Haiti. As a lot of you know, Haiti has taken a turn for the worse and is in the middle of a humanitarian crisis and basically a war zone of unrest, turmoil, and pain. When you actually see this video, I'm not sure if I'll still be stateside or back on the island, but either way, we will celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior because His love, grace, and mercy is the whole reason we came here today. Christmas in Haiti looks a little different than in America. There's usually a church service that follows with rice and beans and fried plantains, a church service that follows with rice and beans and fried plantains. A church service that follows with rice and beans and fried plantains. Technical difficulties, y'all. Um, let's go ahead and move ahead in our service, and um, we're going to sing the song Joy to the World. And if we get a chance, maybe we'll come back to that video a little bit later in our service. So let's stand, and we're going to sing the song Joy to the World together. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let seated at this time. Let us bow our heads in prayer for our offering. Great God, our Redeemer, we sing your praises. Your glorious love shines in the face of Jesus born in a babe in this dark world. We marvel that he generously humbled himself to bring salvation. How precious is your gift of love. Let the light in our songs of, of praise spill through the windows to neighbors dwelling in darkness. And may our gifts and offerings reflect the light of Christ and as beacons in the light 
draw people far and near closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please remain standing for the reading of the gospel 
which is from the Gospel of Luke, the second chapter. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning and Merry, Merry Christmas. We are going to try our Lama Lemie video again at this moment, I think. Yes, thumbs up. Hi, CUMC. It's Ellen from La Lemie Ministries. I just wanted to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. This year in particular has been extremely difficult for my little family in Haiti. As a lot of you know, Haiti has taken a turn for the worse and is in the middle of a humanitarian crisis and basically a war zone of unrest, turmoil, and pain. When you actually see this video, I'm not sure if I'll still be stateside or back on the island, but either way, we will celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior because His love, grace, and mercy is the whole reason we came here today. Christmas in Haiti looks a little different than in America. There's usually a church service that follows with rice and beans and fried plantains because those are the staples for the Haitian culture. It's pretty rare to see Christmas lights and there is nowhere to buy Christmas trees, but we celebrate with what we have and that is party supplies. My girls, employees, and I celebrate Christmas by throwing Jesus the ultimate birthday party with balloons, streamers, and of course cake. Every year the girls sing him happy birthday and we celebrate that he is alive, he is sovereign, he is Jehovah Jireh, and he is good. I've been blessed to spend the last almost 10 years living in Haiti, being a part of La Lime Ministries and being able to not only be the hands and feet of Jesus to a society who desperately needs our help, but also see firsthand miracles performed by the Lord when his people truly trust and rely on him to part the Red Sea and make impossible ways possible. Even Christmas in the Caribbean, where it's 95 degrees, can be a beautiful celebration of what really matters, and that is Christ. With the current unrest where I live, there has been a lack of peace all around. People are afraid to go to the grocery store in fear of being kidnapped for ransom. They're afraid to walk to church in fear of getting hit by a bullet. They can't send their children to school because they lack basic necessities like school books and money for taxis. And doing life in general is becoming more and more grievous traumatizing and beyond imaginable for the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. But I am always reminded this time of year of Isaiah 9, 6. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, the government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. 
So whatever this year has thrown your way, rest assured that we are children of the Prince of Peace, a peace that passes all understanding, peace as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords who comes into this world for the sake of you and me. He is worthy to be glorified. He is worthy to be trusted. He is worthy to be celebrated and worthy to be praised. La Limie is eternally grateful for CUMC and the outpouring of blessings you have given to us over the years. Through meal programs, orphan care, school sponsorships, community outreach classes like Kids Club, Sewing Class, and Bible Studies, this church has made a difference in Haiti in beautiful and humbling ways. Thank you for being the hands and feet of Jesus. Thank you for showing Christ to your neighbors. Thank you for giving us a reason to continue on and fight the good fight, because together we can make King Jesus' name known to the ends of the world for his glory. Happiest of birthdays, Jesus, and may you and your family have a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Friends, I could talk about the Prince of Peace all day long, but hearing it from Ellen living in a country that is uh, in unrest, and she says it with conviction, unlike any other. Now that is speaking the truth of the gospel. Will you pray with me this morning? Loving God, fill our hearts, fill our spirits, and fill our lives with your holy presence and power in this place. In this hour, embrace us with your comforting arms. Engage our spirits to know you in a new way this day. Equip us for your ministry, building us up to be your faithful church. Empower us, O oh Lord, to deeply become your disciples and to uniquely live as the hands and feet of Christ. Accept our prayer, renew our spirits, and transform our lives so that we may be a blessing to those whom we meet this week. Amen. It is so good to be with you on Christmas morning. The last time it happened was 2016, and the next time it's going to happen isn't until 2033. I had to look that up a number of times. 11 years, 2033. So we have a special surprise at the end of this service. Last night and the night before, Christmas Adam, Christmas Eve, we focused on shepherds, at least when I preached. You know, those are the ones that are out in the field keeping watch over their flock. Why? Because of anyone in Bethlehem that the angels could have told anyone, they went to the least likely type of person, the shepherds. And it was an angel, no less, that went to them. And so it was totally unexpected that the angels shared the message of the Messiah's birth with them. With them, yes. And in this instance, uh, we can crinkle up our noses because we also know that the shepherds didn't make it to town very often to get a bath. So, they're the least likely to hear this message. And so now it's Christmas morning, and again, we are to expect the unexpected from our great God. From angels hanging out and singing to stinky shepherds. And today, those shepherds have arrived at the manger to see the baby Jesus. They've been invited, no less, by the heavenly host of glorious and majestic angels. Now, I bet that there's a few of you here in this room today who received a phone call or got a text on your phone that a child or a grandchild, maybe your best friend's child, had been born. And I bet that you weren't probably already dressed and showered and your hair done and all those things that you wanted to go meet that baby. And so you took some time out to do that. Maybe you were even knee-deep in laundry or you were knee-deep in some kind of crazy project, and so you couldn't necessarily rush to the hospital. Now, there is no word in our scripture today about the shepherd stopping off at home or a truck stop to get cleaned up. Nope. The, they received the invitation of a lifetime from angels 
And they headed straight to the innkeeper's barn to see the newborn king, the Messiah, the baby Jesus. Now, whether or not the shepherds were devoted, weekly, temple-attending Jews, they most certainly, they most certainly would have understood the magnitude of the announcement from the angels that day. And the fact that the announcement and the invitation were from angels, no less, well, that just added to the magnitude of the great event. Of course, they were going to run with all their might. They were going to skip cleaning up, and they were headed straight to see the baby Jesus. Now, what would you do if you were to receive that same invitation, that invitation of a lifetime to go see the Messiah born in a manger? Would you hesitate? Would you try to decide if it fit into your schedule? Maybe I can do it in these 15 minutes here. Would you drop everything, absolutely everything, and just run? Or would you second guess whether or not you should go? Not me. I'm but a sinner. I can't go. I shouldn't go. Nope, they, they wouldn't want me to see the newborn king. But Jesus does want you right there with him. God sent his son for the whole world, and that means each and every one of you, each and every one of us. We aren't to second guess God's guest list. You are on God's guest list. Oh, we might not always feel worthy, but I'm here to tell you that on this Christmas morning, God don't make no junk. You are on God's guest list. And that, my friends, is good news. Well, actually, it's the most excellent, absolutely terrific, fantastic, it is great news of the birth of Jesus Christ. So what are you going to do about it? What did the shepherds do about it? What did they do with this incredible news in this event? Well, the shepherds, remember the stinky outcasts of society, they made known what had been told them about this child. Yes, they became immediate evangelists, sharing the good news of great joy. And what might even be more unexpected is in verse 18 tells us that all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. And further in verse 20, the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Who would have expected that the lowly, stinky, outcast shepherds would have been the first evangelists? But they were. Because with our God, we can always expect the unexpected. So no longer will we ever be able to just see the shepherd in a nativity scene and think of them as just a minor character. Forever now, when I see a shepherd standing in the manger scene, looking down upon the baby Jesus, I'll see an unexpected character of God's choosing. And I'll remember, and I hope you remember, that while we too might at times feel like unexpected characters in God's lineup, We too are chosen and worthy of God's love and Jesus' forgiveness. So what else are you and I going to do about this incredible news and this event? Well, I believe there are a couple of things that we can do. The first is to be like the shepherds and to go share that good news. Oh, don't care what the people are going to think around you. The shepherds broke all conventions when they went into the town that day and they told everyone, people that they knew didn't really want to hear from them or be around them or stand too close to them, they told everyone. We too then can find ways to tell others about the good news of great joy in the birth of Jesus Christ. And second, We can become a part of Jesus' plan to bring about the kingdom of heaven right here on earth. Yes, we can find our part and help make it happen. 
I love the new commercials to help the environment. They tell us to go choose one thing to help make a difference in our planet. For example, drinking water from a reusable container rather than buying bottled water, even though it's really convenient. Or lately, at Christmas, they shared suggestions about gift giving, such as avoiding buying knick-knack gifts that take up space or that someone might not really want, or rather give them a gift that's useful and needed. They always end the commercial with this question, what's your one thing? What's your one thing? So today, what's your one thing for Jesus? Oh, it could be just about anything to help further Jesus' reign on earth. Around Cargerville UMC in November, we shared a hundred different ways through our conspiracy of kindness when we preached on it and then gave you the little cards that you scan on your phone and a hundred Different items would pop up of ways in which you could just show Jesus' love around town. Last summer and the summer before, we had dozens of local love local service opportunities. We always have manna bags available that you might give out to neighbors or to people on the corner or someone you just know needs a meal. Now it is Christmas. You know how much I love to sing and I love songs. There's a favorite, I'm not going to sing it, but there's a favorite called Grown Up Christmas List. It's about 30 years old. It was written by David Forrester and Natalie Cole. They sung it together, but I know the Amy Grant version. You've probably heard the song. Here's how the chorus goes. No more lives torn apart. That wars would never start. Now remember, this is our grown-up Christmas list. And time would heal all hearts. Everyone would have a friend. Right would always win. And love would never end. This is my grown-up Christmas list. Now I believe that the items on this list are universal desires of each and every one of us in this very room. All of us deeply wish that everything on this list could be granted for all of God's children all around the world. And if these items are on our grown-up Christmas list, shouldn't we as Jesus followers be helping Jesus make them come to fruition? Shouldn't we be lending a hand in the areas where we can to allow a bit more of heaven to shine on earth? Maybe we don't have the power to influence or stop wars from starting. Yet, if time can and will and does heal hearts, then we can commit to walking with persons whose hearts are broken from grief and pain, from job loss and divorce, or any number of situations. And while we can't be everybody's friend, we could all probably befriend one or two more persons every year, thus making sure that more and more people feel welcomed and loved and cared for. We all wish and pray that right always wins. So how can we be advocates for what we know is right? And how can we stand up for those who we know are being wronged? And even if right doesn't always win, we were standing together and someone wasn't alone. And love would never end. If we vow to always err on the side of love, if each of us vow to make sure and always love and not hate, if every last one of us vow to never stop loving all of God's children all around us, then we can ensure that love will never end. Friends, this is my grown-up Christmas list. These, These are the one thing for Jesus that I want to do this year. What about you? Will you join me and gift these presents back to Jesus for his birthday today? Amen. And amen.
Now, you heard me mention that Christmas only falls on a Sunday very infrequently. So before we do our invitation, I need about 10 or 14 volunteers to come forward. Um, first, if Tondal and Eddie can grab the things behind the altar. And then, um, Danielle, you and your family, come grab some of this. I need one person on each side here. And... Yep, yep, yep. Beth? Yes? Alexis? <laughs> Come on up. Harry? You are on my... And, and Harry? <laughs> Harry was on my conference youth council about, what, how many, 15 years ago? <laughs> All right. So some of you can grab these, hold them up. The balloons are floating. Thank you, Bruce. Now, it is Jesus' birthday today, and so we've got to do it right. So how about everybody stand up, and we're going to sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jesus. Happy birthday to you. Woo, good job. All right, thank you, all you volunteers. You can just place your things on the tables. And the balloons can keep floating. I can't believe they lasted in my car. In this weather, I thought they would just go, because my tires on my Jeep did. <laughs> As we prepare to sing our closing song, if your heart has been touched and you would like to join this great church in our mission and vision together, we invite you. You've got all three of your pastors here this morning and a whole bunch of other great staff today. Um, we would love for you to join. If you want to align yourself to do that one great thing for Jesus and be baptized today, we invite you to come forward on this special birthday day as well. Friends, let us sing, and let us sing with gusto. Sing Angels We Have Heard on High. Angels We Have Heard on High. Sweetly singing o'er the plains and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strain. Oh, 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 Why this you believe? Shepherds, why this you believe? Why your joyous strains prolong? What the glad song tidings be, which inspire your heavenly song? Oh, In a 
Excelsis Deo. Amen, and you guys just sound fabulous on this Christmas morning. Will you receive this? Oh, one announcement. Next Sunday at 11, we will have the foundry service as normal in here. But due to cold weather pipes bursting outside of the narthex um, in the poplar sanctuary, we will have poplar worship on the square at 11. Um, that way we will have a... a, a if people show up here, we can just send them here. But if they remember, we'll, be at the, we'll get the word out, we promise. <laughs> it's been great to be with everyone this morning, both online and here in this place. It is um, extra special to be together on Jesus' birthday. Will you receive this benediction? We have come and sung praise to God. Now let us go and sing God's praise. We have come and heard the word of God. Now let us go and share God's word. And we have come and been with the people of God. Go and be God's people. Go in peace. Amen. As we leave this holy place, bless us with your boundless grace. Face to those who need your love, loving, trusting, serving you by keeping Christ in all we do. Change us into something new. This is our prayer to know Christ and to make Him known by bringing. God bless you, church. Merry Christmas. Go in peace. <laughs>